Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Going to show you something cool as always. Uh, please forgive my my camera. It'll focus here in a second. But just until it does, please listen to what I'm saying. This lesson, um, you're going to really enjoy it because we are going to answer a lot of the questions that you have in regards to how does the sun and moon signs all right these signs in the sun and moon how many times do they happen um, where are they occurring on the timeline if more than once all right and how do they relate to all of these different titles of the day of the Lord all right so I have a comprehensive list here of every time the sun and moon goes dark in reference to the 70th week of Daniel uh, we're going to talk a little bit about all of these different titles and once you get all of this down the question of when does Jesus appear when's the rapture when's the refiners fire I mean all those questions are going to be answered alright so let's get right into this um, first let me say that the Sun and moon are disgraced twice alright I like to call them the left bookend and the right bookend of the 945 days of the day of the Lord. Um, please open my timelines. At least pick one of them to open up in a separate window while you're watching this video. You'll see the links below, either in the narrative or the comments section. Uh, I have a detailed timeline very detailed I've got a, another one that's just a snapshot of the main part of that and then I also have something called a simplified timeline again I've uploaded all these to the folks that keep and share for easy and safe viewing or even downloading so keep it keep one of those open in a separate window it's going to help you tremendously day of the Lord 945 days not 1260 now the sun and moon is disgraced twice. Its father uses it as a sign to let everyone know that the day of the Lord has officially started. We're going to look at all of those verses. And then when we get done going to every scripture that talks about the sixth seal, the start to the day of the Lord, then we're going to look at all of the scriptures related to the sun and moon going dark getting disgraced again just before Jesus appears in the clouds on judgment day at the seventh bowl we're gonna look at all of those uh, this may be new to a lot of you you may not realize that the Sun and moon are used by father to let you know the start of the day of the Lord and the end of the day of the Lord and he's even more gracious than that at the fourth trumpet he uses the Sun and moon again in a different way so you'll know the sixth seal has started you'll know when the last uh, 90 days of the first four trumpets is about to start of course we know what happens after those 90 days of uh, the last 90 days of the year of their punishment the first four trumpets then we go right into the three woes, fifth trumpet, sixth trumpet, and seventh trumpet. So Father is very gracious. Let's get right into this. Um, now, let's talk about, real briefly, what are some titles to the left book in when the sun and moon are disgraced the first time at the sixth seal, and what are the titles of the day, uh, the last day of the day of the Lord, the day that Jesus returns, the day of judgment, the day of his appearing, the day of his coming. What are those titles? And, it's, and learning these brothers and sisters is going to help you tremendously when you're trying to research all of these eschatology passages. And it all just starts kind of um, mixing together and it makes it really hard to make a timeline. But I've been working on this really hard for over four years now, have thousands of hours of study towards eschatology, and I've got a lot of this figured out. No one's got it all figured out, but this is going to help you tremendously, even just looking at the titles. All right, so sun and moon being disgraced to start the day of the Lord at the sixth seal. Let's get the titles, and then we're going to go into the verses. All right, some of the titles are day of his anger. 
wrath of the Lord of hosts, wrath of God, wrath of him who sits on the throne, time of trouble, time of Jacob's trouble. All right, those are just a few, there's more. And then when we get done showing you these scriptures and we go into the last day of the day of the Lord, the day that Jesus appears, that's the day of the resurrection to life of the dead. That's also the day that the uh, living saints get their glorified body, get raptured, caught up, rescued, spared. That's all on that last day. So we'll look at those titles and those verses. Now, let's start before we go into the list of scriptures of the sun and moon going dark at the sixth seal, I need to show you Matthew 3.12. Let's start there. Matthew chapter 3, verse 12. This is uh, John the Baptist has been talking in these verses. All right. Uh, verse 12 says, His winnowing fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire all right that's referring to the last day of the 945 day of the lord period the day of his appearing and his coming all right he's going to be gathering the wheat to the barn to clean out his threshing floor it would help if we had experience in doing this, but cleaning out has a lot to do with bundling the tares. All right? Getting them ready to be burned. Bundling the tares. Uh, but I wanted to show you that. Here's John the Baptist talking about this. A lot of people forget that's in chapter 3 of Matthew. But that is talking about the last day. Of course, we're getting ready to go into the first day of the day of the Lord passages uh, at this point. But I wanted to show you that. You may not have known that was there. Something else cool. Go to Malachi 3, the last book of the Old Testament. Just had to turn a couple pages backwards. Malachi 3, verses 16 through 18. This is talking about the last day of the day of the Lord, the last day of the age, the last day of the world as we know it. This is the appearing of Jesus Christ. Verses 16 through 18. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. Passages like this are very important if you're really curious who is he going to accept into the kingdom? And who, which Christians, people who think they're Christians, who is he going to turn away? All right, people like to say, once saved, always saved. You don't have to worry. You're in the vine. Boom, it's a done deal. That's not what these passages tell us, by the way. But if you want to know who gets to spend eternity with son and father versus eternal punishment, these verses answer this question. This is the day of his coming. This is who he's going to accept. For those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. Do you get up every morning thinking about Jesus and the Bible and wanting to read the Bible? The letters from your fiancé, they shall be mine. Who? The ones who meditate on his name, says the Lord of hosts. On the day that I make them my jewels. That's in reference to Zechariah chapter 9. He's going to lift you up like a banner of jewels over Jerusalem to show you off. And, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Who serves him. Do you serve Jesus and meditate on his name? Do you? Or do you just put money in the offering plate and say, Well, I did my hour for the week on Sunday morning. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked. Uh-oh, here's how he's going to discern. Listen up. Here's how Jesus is going to discern between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Oh, our works aren't important. That just has to deal with uh, our reward, but it doesn't have to do with salvation. What does that just say? He's going to use this to discern between the righteous and the wicked, who he accepts, who he burns, who he denies, cast into outer darkness, between one who serves God does it say between one who believes in God? Between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. 
All right, this day that comes burning like an oven. This is the last day of the day of the Lord, the day of his appearing, the day of the refiner's fire. Wanted to show you that. Now, let's go to the book of Revelation. Let's get these uh, sun and moon being disgraced twice. Let's get this stuff down. Let's go to Revelation chapter 6. The sixth seal, that's uh, Revelation 6, verse 12. I looked when he opened the sixth hill, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. All right, there you go. That's when the, the day of the Lord starts. If you look on my timeline, brothers and sisters, you will see that the day of the Lord starts in Daniel 11, verse 40, second half of that verse. All right, when the king of the north, Antichrist army, uh, heads south, you read about in Ezekiel 21, comes to a fork in the road. He's already defeated the alliance of the continent of Africa, led by Egypt, the king of the south. He defeated them a few months earlier. In fact, 135 days earlier, he defeated them at the battle of the great uh, sacrifice by the river Euphrates. The preemptive strike failed. And uh, 135 days later, he reconstitutes himself, and he heads south and decides not to go left towards Amman. He wants to go right towards Israel and Jerusalem and he does and passes through the mountains of Israel the Bible even tells you what are the first few cities to get hit like uh, well that'll be another lesson but that starts the day of the Lord that's the day when the Sun and moon is going to go dark and the Bible tells us the time of day in reference to Jer Jerusalem time Israel's time it happens at exactly noon exactly at noon the sun and moon are going to be disgraced the first time. We're going to go into all those passages. All right, now uh, let's go to Revelation 8, verse 12. That was Revelation 6, verse 12. Revelation 8, verse 12, right here, is concerning the fourth trumpet. And uh, this is not, um, I don't call this the sun and moon being disgraced. But actually, we could call it that. You know, I like to think of it, the sun and moon is disgraced twice. Left bookend of the day of the Lord, the sixth seal, and the right bookend of the day of the Lord, the day of his appearing at the seventh bowl. But, you know, maybe we need to can say it's actually it actually occurs three times. Because at the fourth trumpet, to kick it off, it says, And a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. So when it, when it happens for a third of the day exactly, after it's already happened the first time at the sixth seal, when the king of the north, Antichrist army, is heading south through, passing through Israel, heading towards the continent of Africa, and especially Egypt. All right, and the only thing left in Egypt is at that point, as far as an army, are just young men. We read about that in Scripture. They're going to be slaughtered. I needed to show you that. So you have the first time, then you have this disgraced for a third of the day and a third of the night at the fourth trumpet, and you'll have ni approximately 90 days of the fourth trumpet, and then you'll go right into the three last woes. Now, uh, let's go to... Revelation 16. Revelation 16 is the, uh, the the bowls of wrath. But the last bowl of wrath is the day that Jesus appears. It's the last day of the day of the Lord. The sun and moon is going to be disgraced on that day as well. Now the seventh bowl starts right here in verse 17 of Revelation 16. I know it's hard to see a on my Bible. You need to have your Bibles open when you study with me. I use a New King James Version and you also need to have one of my timelines opened in another window. Alright, then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done! And then you can read the rest of this, but it talks about the cup of wine of the fierceness of his wrath. That's going to be a key word. I want to point that out while we're here. It doesn't say of his wrath, it's the fierceness. The key word is fierceness, and you'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean here in a second. Now, you may say, brother, I don't see anything in verses 17 through 21 in regards to the sun and moon being disgraced at all. All right, people will say, what are you talking about? I don't see it there. Show me the sun and moon being disgraced. 
Well, Father tells us several different places in the Bible that on the day that it is done, when Jesus appears to give the fierceness of, the, of his wrath, all right, fierceness of the cup of wine or the fierceness of his wrath, on that day the sun and moon is disgraced again, all right? And I'm going to show you all of those verses, but you don't see it here, all right? Bear with me. Now, oh, in, when we were talking about all of those different titles like Day of His Anger, Wrath of the Lord of Hosts, Wrath of God, Wrath of Him Who Sits on the Throne, Time of Trouble, Time of Jacob's Trouble, when we were look, talking about all of that and all of those that I mentioned deal with the sun and moon being disgraced the first time at the sixth seal, um, let me before we leave Revelation, let me show you some titles, and this is going to help you, brothers and sisters, when you're trying to figure out, is it a mid-trib rapture? Um, do the seals, trumpets, and bowls all happen at the same time, overlapped, first group, second group, third group, or is it all sequential? When you're trying to figure all that, if you get these titles down, it's going to help you tremendously. You see on my timeline, you'll see my understanding of all this. But the... Um, the wrath, the initial title to this day of the Lord wrath is right here in verse 17 of Revelation 6 to end chapter 6. All right, we just had the sixth seal when the sun and moon is disgraced the first time. And the title to start the day of the Lord here in Revelation is for the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand. In fact, let me back up and start reading verse 16. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, who is able to stand. All right? Now, the wrath of him who sits on the throne, that's Father. That's Father orchestrating uh, the, um, the, the trumpet judgments. All right, we know there's seven of them. The seven trumpet is the bowls of wrath. All right, you're going to have the first four trumpets, the year of their punishment, followed by the last three woes. Now, whose wrath is it talking about here? Who is able to stand on the day of his wrath? That's the day Jesus for judgment. That bowl, the battle of the great day of God Almighty, when in an instant, suddenly, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, Jesus appears with that supercell storm cloud engulfed in fire, getting ready to burn the chaff. All right? That's what that's talking about. Now, him who sits on the throne, that's one of the titles for the entire day of the Lord, except for the last day. Now, the last day is called the wrath of the Lamb. You need to understand that. The wrath of the Lamb, the day of his wrath, that's on, going to be the, uh, the last day of the day of the Lord when the sun and moon is disgraced a second time, not counting the fourth trumpet one-third of the day. Now, you got to get that straight. That's why these titles are so important. And I've already gave you a list of titles to, that are for the entire day of the Lord. I say it's for the sixth seal, but sixth seal starts the day of the Lord. So all the titles I gave you match just him who sits on the throne but I haven't given you all the titles for um, the wrath of the lamb yet and I will now sticking with the left book into the day of the Lord uh, let's turn to Isaiah 13 Isaiah 13 is probably the best chapter in the Bible to explain to you the bookends of the day of the Lord get you into that frame of mind that Father likes to use two different titles, one for the left book end of the day of the Lord and one for the right book end of the day of the Lord. All right, so even this is talking about the burden against Babylon. All right, these titles are talking about the entire day of the Lord. Now, the entire day of the Lord will eventually bring about the fall of Babylon. But if you look here in verse 9, all right, look in verse 9 of Isaiah 13. It says, Behold, the day of the Lord comes. See, the day of the Lord is the entire 945-day period. Now, the day of the day of the Lord, capital D, which you see in uh, 
some New King James Version passages, that's the, the wrath of the Lamb on the last day, day of judgment. Now, the, this day of the Lord comes cruel with both wrath and, there's the key word, and fierce anger. And the key word is fierce. Because the uh, day of his anger is the entire day of the Lord, which comes with wrath, the wrath of the Lord of hosts, the wrath of him who sits on the throne, the wrath of God. That's the entire day of the Lord. But the day of his fierce anger, that's the wrath of the Lamb, that's judgment day. So these are the two bookends to the day of the Lord right here. Um, now this chapter 13 in Isaiah does talk about the sun and moon being disgraced. But this is actually talking about the sun and moon being disgraced on the day of punishment. The wrath of the Lamb. The day of vengeance. All right, The day of judgment. So if you keep reading, it's, it talks about the uh, for the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened and it's going forth and the moon will not cause its light to shine. Yes, we're going to do the six seal sun and moon being disgraced verses first. And you may say, well, why did you bring me to Isaiah 13 if this is the sun and moon being disgraced a second time on the day of his coming and appearing? Well, the reason why I brought you to Isaiah 13 was to show you the bookends to the day of the Lord. You know, the wrath of God, the wrath of him who sits on the throne, and then the final day being the day of his fierce anger. This Who can stand on this day when the wrath of the Lamb occurs at his appearing, the day of judgment? So that's why I brought you here. But yes, the sun and moon being disgraced here in Isaiah 13 is talking about the seventh bowl, the day of his appearing. And another key word here is punish or punishment. You see it throughout these verses that talk about the sun and moon being disgraced. If it says fierce or if it says punish or punishment, that's in regards to the last day at the seventh bowl when Jesus appears to judge the earth. All right, I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their iniquity will halt the arrogance of the proud. Um, and then you come down here to verse 13 of Isaiah 13, and it says, Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth will move out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts. Okay, that's the entire day of the Lord, except for the seventh bowl. And it says, And in the day of his fierce anger. So 13 mentions the bookends, just like verse 9 did. 9 and 13 of Isaiah 13 talk about these bookends to the day of the Lord when the sun and moon is being disgraced. But these titles are actually, that's the, the title, the entire day of the Lord, except for the seventh bowl. That's what comes after the word and, in the day of his fierce anger. Again, the day of his anger is the entire day of the Lord. The day of his fierce anger is the wrath of the Lamb at Jesus' appearing to judge the earth. Okay. Well, you may have to watch this video several times to get it straight because it can get a little confusing. All right, again, one more verse I need to show you before we go to this list of verses about the sun and moon being disgraced. Let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. 1 Peter <coughs> chapter 4, verse 12. There we go. If you haven't read this verse... It's really going to help you in regards to are the saints here during the day of the Lord or not. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. It's right here. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, the beloved, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed at the end of all of this fiery trial, you may also be glad with exceedingly joy. Blessed are you. So right here tells you that the beloved, the blessed, are going to suffer and partake of Christ's suffering during this wrath of the Lamb. Excuse me. Not during the wrath of the Lamb. During the wrath of him who sits on the throne. The wrath of the Lord of hosts. The entire day of the Lord except for the seventh bowl. We will be here, and it's called the fiery trial of the saints. It's also called the hour of trial, to test, to purge, to sift. All right? 
That's what it means, brothers and sisters. And it's not just talking about, well, life in general. No, it's talking about the uh, this fiery trial that leads up to his revealing in glory at the seventh bowl. Don't let anyone tell you different. And right here in verse 17 of the same chapter, 1 Peter 4.17 says, For the time has come. Again, we're talking about Christ revealing. What? What has come? For judgment to begin at the house of God, and it begins with us first. What will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? All right? That's talking about the 945 days of the fiery trial. But actually, the fiery trial starts before the day of the Lord for the saints. It actually starts at the abomination of desolation, fifth seal. And the fifth seal lasts 390 days itself. All right. Now let's go into the sun and moon being disgraced the first time, which is the sixth seal. Let's start with Jeremiah 6, verse 4. I hope you're writing all these down. Jeremiah 6, verse 4. Trying to go fast so I don't run out of memory on my computer. Jeremiah 6, verse 4. Prepare war against her, arise, and let us go up at noon. Tells you the time of day that the Antichrist is going to attack. Woe to us, for the day goes away, for the shadows of the evening are lengthening. Arise and let us go by night and let us destroy her palaces. All right, when we get through reading these verses, you're going to see why the noon is so important. Let us go up at noon, prepare war against her. Destruction is coming. This is the time of day that the sun and moon is going to go dark to announce to the world that the Antichrist is beginning his attack All right, at the sixth seal. He's going to pass through the mountains of Israel. Time to blow the first trumpet. But you're going to have a confirmation when the sun and moon goes dark at noon. Wanted to show you that. Let's go to Zephaniah 2 verse 4. Zephaniah 2 verse 4 For Gaza shall be forsaken and Ascalon desolate they shall drive out Ashdod at noonday and Ekron shall be uprooted Remember these are some of the first cities that are going to be attacked in Israel as the Antichrist army is passing through the mountains of Israel in route to take the spoil of Egypt and the continent of Africa. They shall drive out Ashdod at noonday, all right? Noonday. So right up here in verse 2 it says, Before the decree is issued, or the day passes like chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you, seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth. Again, remember, that if you read all of these passages, we find out that the Lord's fierce anger is talking about Judgment Day. But before that, you're going to have to deal with the Lord's anger. The key word there, fierce, is not in that one. That's talking about the entire day of the Lord. But noonday, that's when the sun and moon is going to go dark the first time. That's the time of day. Let's go to Amos 8, verse 9. Amos 8, verse verse 9 there it is Amos 8 verse 9 and it shall come to pass in that day says the Lord God that I will make the sun go down at noon and I will darken the earth in broad daylight I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentations all right the sun will go down on the prophets. This happens at noonday. This is the sixth seal. When the Antichrist army begins to pass through the mountains of Israel, the earth is going to shake tremendously. All right? Noonday. Go to Joel 2, verse 10. Joel 2, verse 10.
All right. The earth quakes before them, the heavens tremble, the sun and moon grow dark, and the stars diminish their brightness. The Lord gives voice before his army. This is not his bride army. This is his first of three armies he musters during the day of the Lord. Three of them. The first one is the Antichrist army, also called the rod of his indignation. Yes, it's Father's doing. Father gives voice before his army. His camp is very great. This is not his flock. This is not his people. All right? This is the sun and moon going dark and the earth quaking at the sixth seal. This is Joel 2, not Joel 3. There's a difference. All right? Here he comes. Now, if you turn to... Uh, here we go. We're going to also turn to verse 31 of Joel 2. 31 of verse of Joel 2, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. See, turned into blood. Before the coming, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. So Joel 2 is all about the sixth seal, darkness. There you go. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You better do it then. Because if you wait till the last trumpet at the seventh bowl, Zechariah 9, 14, uh, you've waited too long. You better do it before you die and before we get to the seventh bowl. And do not take the mark of the beast. Let's turn to, we're not going to go to Joel 3 until we get to the seventh bowl, sun and moon being disgraced. Sticking with the sixth seal, let's go to Micah chapter 3, verse 6. I can find it. There it is, Micah. Chapter 3, verse 6. Therefore you shall have night without vision, you shall have darkness without divination. The sun shall go down on the prophets, and the day shall be dark for them. Alright? This is the start to the day of the Lord. It begins a, a period of the first four trumpets called the year of their punishment. That's Jeremiah 32, I believe. Or is it 23? I think it's 32. The Look on my timeline. It's the year of their punishment. All right? The men of Anathoth shall be repaid. Uh, and that those judge, uh, trumpet judgments are also going to fall on Egypt, by the way, to include the darkness. We see that in Ezekiel 30 through 32. Um, it's, well, Revelation 6, 12, we've already saw that. All right, you've already saw the sun and moon going dark at the sixth seal in Revelation 6, verse 12. Now, on the subject of Egypt, let's go there right now. This is the six seal signs that are also going to be seen over Egypt. Ezekiel 30, verse 18. Ezekiel 30, verse 13. No, verse 18, sorry. Uh, how do you pronounce that? At Tephaphanes, the day shall also be darkened when I break the yokes of Egypt there, and her arrogant strength shall cease in her, as for her a cloud shall cover her, and her daughters shall go into captivity. Thus I will execute judgments on Egypt. Remember, that's uh, Daniel 11, verse 40, second half. All right. The first half of Daniel 11, 40 talks about Egypt's main army, leading that alliance from Africa, suffering a tremendous defeat at the river Euphrates. That's the time of the end, all right, which is 135 days before the day of the Lord begins at the sixth seal. See my timeline. That, that uh, day, uh, time of the end also starts that prophecy of Isaiah 20, when uh, Egypt and Ethiopia will walk barefoot and naked for 1,080 days. All right, Isaiah 20 prophecy. Uh, but there you go. That's talking about the darkness. You go to Ezekiel 32, verse 7. Ezekiel 32, verse 7. When I put out your light, I will cover the heavens and make its stars dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of the heavens I will make dark over you and bring darkness upon your land, says the Lord of God. Trouble your hearts. Make you horribly afraid. All right, the Antichrist army, the rod of indignation, Father's first army that he musters is en route. All right, sun and moon is going to go dark at what time? Noon. 
Brothers and sisters, that's all of them for the sixth seal, sun and moon being disgraced. We were in Jeremiah, Zephaniah, Amos, Joel, Micah, Revelation, Ezekiel. All right, now let's switch to the titles of the seventh bowl when Jesus appears in the day that you're raptured, the day of the resurrection of the dead, the day of judgment. What are some titles? Then we'll look at the verses. The day of his fierce anger. See the difference? Wrath of the Lamb, Day of Punishment, Day of Judgment, Day of Vengeance, Day of Recompense, The Refiner's Fire, Plague of the Furnace of Fire, Plague of the Fiery Furnace, okay? The Wrath that we are not appointed for, that's all Seventh Bowl, Day of Judgment, all right? So in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, the Wrath that we are not appointed for is not the Day of the Lord, it's the last day of the day of the Lord, the day of judgment. That's the wrath that we are not appointed for. The refiner's fire. Are you with me? That's the day. That's when the resurrection of the dead occurs. That's what Daniel 12 has told us all along. 1,335 days following the abomination of desolation at the fifth seal comes the resurrection to life. That's when Daniel will raise from the dead. The Bible has always told us that. Uh, so, yes, there is a rapture, and you need to call it a rapture because you are being raptured and spared from something, that refiner's fire that's mentioned in Malachi. Um, you are being raptured, but it's a seventh bowl rapture. You will go through the hour of trial. But Church of Philadelphia, they're going to have enough understanding to where they're going to flee in time. Are you with me? One example of that is Isaiah chapter 16, the Philadelphia Church of Philadelphia, people of understanding, the poor who watch, who are the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the Bible tells you exactly where they're going to be sheltered during the day of the Lord. These are Christians. They're going to the fords of Arnon, also called the Wadi Mujib. You see it there on Google Earth, all right, in Jordan. The Bible tells you all of that. All right, now let's go into the verses of the seventh bowl, sun and moon being disgraced a second time, second time, not counting the fourth trumpet signs in the sun and moon. All right, let's start with Joel 3.15. So back to Joel, but now we're in chapter 3. All right. Joel 2 was the six seal darkness. Joel 3 is the seven darkness. Joel 3, verse 15. The sun and moon shall grow dark, and the stars will diminish their brightness. The Lord also will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and earth will shake, but the Lord will be a shelter for his people. So he not only shelters you if you fled the, weak, uh, the wicked during the day of the Lord, but he's also going to be a shelter for you because he's going to glorify you. All right, and you are going to be used as his bright army in the strength of the children of Israel. And of course, any Israelis who are still left in their manna dust bodies who did not take the mark, he will be a shelter for them as well, even though they weren't glorified because their lamp was not lit in time. Uh, that's Joel 3. Let's go to Isaiah 24. These are all seventh bold darkness chapters. Isaiah 24. Verse 23. Isaiah 24, verse 23. Right here at the bottom. You probably can't see it on the video. Then the moon will be disgraced, and the sun is shaken, for the Lord of hosts will reign. Okay, now he's king. This is King Jesus. He's, he's ruling. He has appeared on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his elders gloriously. All right. Isaiah 24 talks about the 45 days called the many days of the bowls of wrath. The bowls of wrath last many days, 45 days to be exact. We know that because of 1335 minus 1290. That's the length of the seventh trumpet. They're going to be trapped in the pit as they all come pouring in the valley of Jezreel. All right. Father's going to be uh, abusing them from the air invisibly until his son comes on the last day of the age. And when he does, you're, again, you're going to see that sun and moon being disgraced again. Just before he appears. He appears at twilight. Did you know that? All right, we're going to look at some verses that prove the hour of the Lord's coming. All right, it's just before, it's at dusk. Just before 9 p.m. in the early summer heat. 
Isaiah 17 and Isaiah 18 and Zechariah 14 has told us all along the month and the hour of our Lord's return, but not the year, not the day. Uh, continuing with seventh bowl darkness, let's go to Zechariah, not Zephaniah, Zechariah 14, verse 6. Zechariah 14, verse 6. All right, this is another chapter talking about the return of Jesus Christ. All right, here we go right here. Verse 6, it shall come to pass in that day that there will be no light. The lights will diminish. It shall be one day which is known to the Lord. Doesn't say the hour is known to the Lord. The day is known to the Lord. Neither day nor night, but at evening time, this is dusk, it shall happen that it will be light that's your the light is the flash of the glorification of the living saints and and the resurrection of the dead it's going to be a brilliant flash coming out of this top of this storm cloud okay you see all these verses in the bible that talk about your righteousness shall go forth all right it's going to be if not to mention this fire that's going to be engulfing the supercell storm cloud all right Seventh bold darkness. You see it there in Zechariah 14. Go back to oh Isaiah 13. We've already read that in verse 10. We said that was a seventh bold darkness passage. Isaiah 13 verse 10. Now uh, let's see Matthew 24 verse 29. Okay. That is seventh bowl. Seventh bowl. Return of Christ. Matthew 24 verse 29 immediately after the tribulation of those days now people argue about what's the tribulation of those days the tribulation of the days of the entire 1335 days that daniel had to rest the dead get to rest the living are going to go through this this fiery trial of the saints the hour of trial is the entire 1335 days until from the fifth seal abomination of desolation until the seventh bowl appearing of jesus christ on judgment day all right the tribulation of those days is the whole period don't try to break it up into tribulation regular strength tribulation great strength don't try to do that okay the tribulation of those days is the entire 1335 days mentioned in daniel chapter 12. So immediately following that, now we move into the seventh bowl. What does it say? This, uh, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. All right, that's seventh bowl darkness. Hallelujah. Okay, back to Ezekiel. Now we're not in chapter 30 or 32. Let's go to Ezekiel 34, 12. Ezekiel 34:12. I can find it. Ezekiel 34:12. Okay, as a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is among his sca uh, scattered sheep, the day that he is among the slaves of Israel, this is the day that Jesus is actually physical, back in the physical realm, he has appeared and now we're getting ready to have a sheep joke sheep goat judgment okay but this day that he appears is the day we're talking about here in verse 12 as a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day he is among his scattered sheep that's the day of his coming so will i seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places where they were scattered or taken as slaves during this this fight this battle on a cloudy and dark day all right, so again, that's talking about seventh bowl darkness. Wanted to show that to you. Uh, I showed you Zechariah 14, 7 in regards to the hour of our Lord's return at dusk over Jerusalem. Uh, another confirmation of that is Isaiah chapter 17, verse 14. We'll go there to end the lesson. Isaiah 17, 14, the hour of your Lord's return. has been here the whole time, brothers and sisters. So this matches Zechariah 14. This is uh, Isaiah 17. All right. Start reading in verse 12. Woe to the multitude of many people who make a noise like the roar of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. 
All right, the nations will rush like the rushing of many waters. This is the uh, Antichrist army, but God will rebuke them, and they will flee far away, and will be chased like the chaff of, of the mountains before the wind, like a rolling thing before this whirlwind. This is the supercell storm cloud that Jesus and his saints are going to be riding on. Then behold, at even tide, trouble, and before the morning, he, the Antichrist, is no more. All right, this is the portion of those who plunder us and a lot of those who rob us. All right, this is when Jesus appears at the seventh bowl, day 1335, following the abomination of desolation. This is it. And it's a 12 hour battle, brothers and sisters. And Jesus is going to use his bride army to thresh the land from the Nile River to the Euphrates River. See uh, Isaiah 41, Micah 4, Isaiah 66. Revelation 19 and many other passages, brothers and sisters. You will be used to thresh the land. You're taken to the barn. The barn is the armory of the Lord. You read about that in Psalm 18. Did you know that? You're going to get your bow of bronze, your uh, arrows of the Lord's deliverance, and you will fight. And the Bible says in Zechariah 9 that your uh, uh, robe is going to be stained in blood as well, and it's going to look like you're soaked with wine. You're going to be so bloody. But Psalm 110 says he only takes volunteers on the day of his power. All right? So you do not have to fight if you don't want to. It's a 12-hour fight. By morning, he, the Antichrist, is no more. So the hour of our Lord's return over Jerusalem has always been in the Bible, not the day. That's where people get confused. The month, in case you didn't know it, to end the lesson is actually in Isaiah 18. It tells you the month of the Lord's return. Been there the whole time. It says he's going to return during the grape growing season and when the grapes are right still in the flower that's the month of june ask anyone in israel who grows grapes it's in june before the flower starts to fall off and guess what my guess is this is just a guess this is me guessing it's me speaking most likely going to be a shavuot shavuot pentecost all right so look at the years in the future that have a early to mid-june shavuot those are the years I would be looking at for the seventh bowl return of Jesus Christ. Seven year period for the, uh, the seventh week of Daniel. So you, that means you're probably looking at a June or July start to the seventh week of Daniel. It's not a fall harvest return of Christ. Everyone's been wrong about that to include myself. It is a Shavuot time or, or around that time. I think it's going to be a Shavuot. We know the seventh trumpet is 45 days long. And guess what happens about 45 to 50 days before the Shavuot? Passover week. All right. Isn't that a great time to sound the seventh trumpet to announce the kingdom has been awarded to the saints, even though it's not time to possess it at all? You can go to Daniel 7 if you want to read all about that uh, court in heaven verdict judgment that's read. Jesus is awarded the kingdom at the seventh trumpet. Excuse me, the saints are awarded the kingdom. Jesus is crowned. Jesus is given a kingdom and a dominion at the seventh trumpet. That's what Revelation is all about. Excuse me, Revelation 11 is all about. Daniel 7 is all about it. That's the judgment. When Elijah and Moses are seen rising from the streets in front of their enemies, rising up in that cloud, when Father says, Come up here, only to Elijah and Moses. All right? When they rise and you have the Jerusalem earthquake and 7,000 die, one-tenth of the city falls, that's the seventh trumpet announcement. Now we, the cup is passed and you have 45 days to bring about the fall of Babylon. And Father's orchestrating that, riding the dark swift clouds of Isaiah 19. And then it's time to send Jesus in the physical realm at, on the last day. The refiner's fire, the wrath of the Lamb is the climax to the wrath of God. The wrath of the Lamb is the full strength pouring. The full st When the wrath of God is poured full strength, that's the wrath of the Lamb. That's when the sun and moon is disgraced a second time. Do not confuse it with the fourth trumpet signs in the sun and moon. We gotta get that straight to people. Because people, are, if they don't get that, they're gonna see that happen a second time in, at the fourth trumpet and then they're going to get confused and say wow what happened Jesus didn't come or if he came he didn't take me no don't confuse the fourth trumpet with the seventh bowl hallelujah brothers and sisters I hope this lesson has been a blessing to you 
you now have all of the or majority of the titles to the day of the Lord you also have the majority of titles to the seventh bowl last day of the day of the Lord which is when the wrath of God is poured out full strength with fierceness of his wrath the refiners fire the day of judgment day of punishment you've got all these titles now you know when the sun and moon is disgraced the first time the second time don't forget about the fourth trumpet you've got all of these passages in the Bible please study my timelines please ask questions brothers and sisters I can't wait to see you next time and God bless